ಅಪ್ಯಂತುಮಂಗಿ ಭಕ್ಪ್ರಾಣಶ್ಯಕ್ಷುಶ್ರೋತ್ರಮತುಬಲಮೇಂದ್ರಿಯಾ ಚರ್ವಾಬ್ರಹ್ಮೋಪನಿಷದ ಮಹಾಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ನಿರಾಕುರ್ಯಂ ಮಾ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ನಿರಾಕರೋತ್ ಅನಿರಾಕರಣಮಸ್ತು ಅನಿರಾಕರಣ ಮೇ ಅಸ್ತು ತದಾತ್ಮನಿ ನಿರತೆ ಯೌಪನಿಷತ್ಸು ಧರ್ಮಸ್ತೆ ಮಯಿ ಸಂತು ತೇ ಮಯಿ ಸಂತು ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಪೀಸ್ ಮಂತ್ರ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಿ ಸಾಮ ವೇದ ಮೇ ಕ್ವಾಚ್ನಸ್ ಜಿ ಸೆನ್ ಜಾಪನ್ ಮೈ ಲಿಮ್ಸ್ ಮೈ ಸ್ಪೀಚ್ ಮೈ ಬ್ರೆತ್ ಮೈ ಐಸ್ ಮೈ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ May all my senses wax clear and strong. May Brahman show himself unto me. May I never deny Brahman or Brahman me. I with him and he with me. May we abide all us together. May there be revealed to me who am Jibhuja to Brahman, the holy truth of the Upanishads. Om, peace, peace, peace be unto all. this morning our subject is shankara a great teacher of vedanta we are observing shankara's birthday anniversary service with our shankara it is almost difficult to imagine vedanta philosophy <coughs> shankara said krite vishu guru brahma ತ್ರಿತಾಷಿಸತ್ತಮ ದ್ವಾಪರೆ ವ್ಯಾಸೈವ ಸ್ಯಾತ್ ಕಲು ಅತ್ರ ಭವೈಮ್ಯಹಂ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಸೈತ್ಯ ಯುಗ ಗೋಲ್ಡನ್ ಏಜ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ದಿ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಚರ್ ವಾಸ್ ವಿಶ್ವ ಗುರು ದಿ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಚೀಚರ್ ಹು ಟಾಟ್ ದಿ ಫೋರ್ ವೇದಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವೇದಾಂತ ಇನ್ ದಿ ತ್ರಿತ ಯುಗ Vaishishta was the world teacher. This Yoga Vaishishta Ramayana tells us what is highest Vedanta philosophy. In Dwapara Yuga, Vyasa was the teacher. Without Vyasa, it is hard to, difficult, it is hard to imagine Vedanta, who compiled the four Vedas, wrote Brahma Sutras, Bhagavad Gita, Mahabharata, Rama, and also Bhagavata Purana, and many, many, many books. And Shankara says in this Kuli Yuga, I am the world teacher. Very interesting. It seems all great teachers or geniuses do not live long. Shankara lived only 32 years. Christ, 33 years, Swamiji, 39 years, Chaitanya, 48 years, Sri Ramakrishna, 51 years. But years doesn't matter. The messages they gave, those messages are eternal. The story goes, Shiva Guru and Vishishta, a very spiritual couple, lived in Kalaji in Kerala. They had no children. So Shiva Guru prayed to the Lord Shiva, Lord, please give me a son. Shiva gave him a vision and said, what kind of son do you want? If you want an omniscient son, he will not live long. But if you are an ordinary son, he will live long. Shiva Uri said, Lord, I like to have a son like you. Thus, Shankara was born as an incarnation of Lord Shiva. Sri 
son. It is not easy to have a real son. What do I mean, real son? In Hitopadesha, we read Ajato Mrito Mutkipu. Ajato, the child who is not born, Mrito, who is dead, and Murko, stupid. Among these three, two are better than the last one. Why? Because the Ajato, the child was not born and was dead, for them, parents get some temporary pain. But the stupid son gives pain all through their lives. That is the reason. Shiva Guru wanted an omniscient son like Lord Shiva. He was very precocious. Shiva Guru died when Shankara was three years old. At the age of five, his mother arranged Upanayana, sacred ceremony, and then sent the son to the school. He went to the school. He was Shrutidhar, whatever he listens once and never forgets. So we read the scriptures. Ramayana, Mahabharata, Vedas, Vedanta. And six types of philosophy he read from the age of five to seven in two years. Amazing. Then his name is spread everywhere that he is a great, great teacher. The king, Raja Shekhar, wanted to see him, but Shankara said, no, I cannot go to the king. The king should come to me. The king was very humble. He came to see Shankara. As amazed, watching his erudition, knowledge, wisdom, he was very devoted to his mother. It was in horoscope that he will die at the age of eight. But if he takes shanas, if he becomes a monk, he will live another eight years. So what happened? <clears throat> One day, his mother, the river was, Alwai River was quite a distance from their home. His mother was trying to bring some water. On the way, she fell and was injured. So Shankara prayed to the Lord, Lord, why don't you bring the river near our house so that my mother will not have to walk such a long distance? Next day they found the river came to their home. I remember in 1986 I went there in Kalaji and I took bath in that river. It is not too deep, it is maybe waist deep of water in the middle of the river. I took bath there. One day, Shankara and his mother were bathing in the river. All of a sudden, a crocodile came and grabbed Shankara's leg. And all people are trying to rescue him, but couldn't. The Shankara shouted, Mother, give me permission to be a monk. Then crocodile may give me up unwillingly. Vishishta gave permission, all right, be a monk. I want you to be alive, to be alive. So anyhow, she, the crocodile left Shankara, left home at the age of age. He heard about a great teacher, Govinda Pada, in Unkarishar. Some people say that he was an incarnation of Patanjali. I went there in 1997, Unkarishar, on the bank of the Tungabhadra, of the, of the <coughs> river, Rebuti. Beautiful place.
Guru Govinda Pada was immersed in Shavadi for many, many, many years. Many of his disciples tried to break his Shamadi but could not succeed. But when Shankara went, he chanted eight verses, which is called Guru Stakam, eight verses on Guru. Beautiful, very poetic. Shriram Surupam Sadaroga Muktam Jasas Charu Chitram Dhanam Meridulam Guru Rangi Padme Manashena Lagnam Tatakim 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 Kalatram Dhanam Putra Putra Di Sarvam Griam Bandava Sarva Meta Di Jatam Guru Rangi Padme Manashena Lagnam Tatakim 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 Shalangadi Vedu Mukha Shastra Vidda Kovitancha Goiddam Supaiddam Karuti Guru Rangi Padme Munashena Lagnam Tatakim 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 Very beautiful. Then your three verses are enough. Shuriram Surupam, you might have a beautiful body. Shuriram Surupam, Shadaru, and your diseaseless body. And your name and fame may be spread all over. You might have plenty, plenty of wealth, but if you have no devotion, love for Guru, what does it avail? What does it avail? What does it avail? You might have plenty of play friends and relatives. You might have a beautiful, expensive home, but if you do not have love and devotion for Guru, what does it avail? What does it avail? You may be a great scholar, you may be a great writer and poet, but if you do not have devotion for your guru, what does it avail? What does it avail? Anyhow, when this Govindapada heard this eight verses from Shankara, that eight years old boy, he opened his eyes. He understood, my successor has come. Then, next, Four years, this guru, three years, I think, the guru trained him. Hatha yoga, Gana yoga, Raja yoga, all yogas, all with spiritual wisdom gave to him. Then guru says, this is the time has come for me to depart, to depart, from, to depart from this world. You go to Banaras and Preach this Vedanta, this greatest wisdom of Vedanta philosophy. Benares was the city of learning and culture. All great scholars, Punjis, lived in Benares. So who went to Benares? Please remember, at that time there is no train, no aeroplane, no bus, no car. Walked from Maharashtra, from from Unkarishwar, he went to Banaras. From Kerala, he came to Unkarishwar. Quite a distance. Shankara walked quite a bit. So in Banaras, one day he was going, taking bath in the going to take bath in the river. He found a woman on the step with her dead husband. So Shankara says, why don't you ask this, take this dead body to the cremation ground to, 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 to be cremated? That woman says, why don't you ask the dead body to move to the cremation ground? What do you mean, dead body doesn't move? Well, that you believe. You think Nirgun Brahman is everything. You do not believe the Shakti aspect, the gun, gunas of the Nirgun Brahman. Saying so, the woman and the dead body disappeared. Shankara knew, which was the Divine Mother, wanted to give him a great lesson. Shakti, the power of Brahman, which creates, preserves, and destroys this universe. So he became a great devotee of the Divine Mother, 
and wrote many hymns on her. Another day in Banaras, Shankara was walking. He found a Chandala, a locust person, <coughs> was walking with four dogs. Shankara said, hey, Chandala, give me away. Don't touch me. That man, the Chandala says, Pariya, what? You are the Atman Brahman. Who touches whom? I am also Atman Brahman. Who do not touch each other? Then Shankara understood. The Chandala was nothing but Lord Shiva, and four dogs represent four Vedas. Then Shiva said, Shankara, I am very pleased with you. You write the whole Vedanta philosophy. Saying so, he disappeared. Shankara was surrounded by his disciples and devotees. He said that Banaras is not a good place to write books. So he went to Badrika Ashrama. Alokananda River, I remember I went there in 1977. Kedarnath and Bodhrinath. That Bodhrinath, from Bodhrinath a little bit further, they called it Basha Gumpha, the cave of Basha. Shankara went there and in three years he wrote, he finished all his writings. Commentary of the Upanishad, 10 major Upanishads, commentary of the Brahma Sutra and the Gita, and many, many books he wrote. He wrote, I think, 79 books and hymns together. Then, while returning, they stopped at Uttarkashi. There he found a, an old man. Shankara met him, and so they are discussing about Vedanta. So they had a debate on Vedanta philosophy for seven days. Nobody can defeat each other. Then Shankara's disciple, Padmapad, said, he's not an ordinary person. He must be Vyasa Deva. So Shankara next day bowed down to him and said, you are that great sage Vasha. Vasha says, yes, I am Vasha. I just wanted to test your wisdom, knowledge. <coughs> Shankara, the Vasha, he said, my time is over, 16 years I am supposed to leave, so I must depart from this world. Basha said, no, 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 no. You must now preach Vedanta for all, in all over India. You have many things to do. I am giving a blessing to you so that you may live another 16 years. So he got two extensions, 8 to 16, again 16 to 32. Next 16 years, Shankara traveled the length and breadth of all India. From, think of that, from Rameshwaram to Kashmir and from Assam to Dharuka. The whole Arjavartha, the whole India, he traveled. He defeated 75 schools of thought. There are so many schools. He established four monasteries in the four corners of India. Jyotir Mat or Joshi Mat near Badrik Ashrama in the north. In the south, Shringari Mat. In Dwarvaka, Sharada Mat near the Arabian Sea. And in Puri, Govardhan Maj. So he established four monasteries to preserve the Vedantic culture. 
Băi de grelice. Ai be zice de all four monasteries. And he established four monastic orders. Tirtha, Bon, Aranya, Giri, Puri, Bharati, Parbat, Shagar, Ashram, Saraswati. Ten monastic orders. We call it Dasanami Shampradaya. Ten monastic orders, those who will carry this ancient wisdom of Vedanta from generation after generation. It goes to Guru Parampara, Guru to disciple, Guru to disciple, Guru to disciple. So we belong to Ramakrishna order, belong to Puri sect. Sri Ramakrishna's Guru was Totapuri, came from Shankara's order. And then Ramakrishna and then Sri Ramakrishna disciples and disciples and disciples. We belong to Puri sect of Shankara. <coughs> Shankara had a great devotion for his mother. When he became a monk, he promised to his mother, I shall look after you. I shall be present at the time of death, my first promise. Second, I shall show your chosen deity, I shall show you God. Third, I shall, another thing he said, um, I shall cremate your body, something like that. So Shankara came and fulfilled his desire, fulfilled his promise to his mother. He was very devoted to his mother. <coughs> so after Uttar Kashi, <coughs> I'm just giving you a brief biographical sketch of Shankara. Uttar Kashi, Basha says, first you will have to go to Kumari Bhatta, who is a great exponent of Mimamsha philosophy. If you can defeat him, that would be a great victory for you. You will have to understand the Vedic period. This is the Karma Kanja, the ritualistic part of the Vedas. And this is Gana Kanja, the knowledge aspect of the Vedas. This rituals and this knowledge. The ritualistic says our goal is to go to heaven through karma. And this Vedantic school says, Uttur Mimamsa, Basha says, goal is not heaven, goal is liberation. So Shankara belongs to the second group. So when we went to Kumaril, Kumaril was dying. He says, I, I am dying, I cannot answer your question, but if you can defeat my disciple, Manjan Misra, in Mahishmati, then it will be equivalent to defeating me. So Shankara went and challenged him. His wife was very wise. But who would be the umpire? Let your wife be the umpire. So they had seven days debate. Nobody can defeat each other. And later on, Manjan Mishra was defeated. The condition was that if you are defeat, if you are defeated, I shall be your disciple. If you are disciple, you defeated, I am I shall, you will be my disciple. And if I am defeated, I will be your disciple. So he was defeated, so he is supposed to be Shankara's disciple. Then Ubhai Bharati says, you have defeated the half, the other half is me. You will have to defeat me, otherwise you cannot take my husband as a monk. So, all right, ask your questions. So this woman was so <laughs> tricky. He said, she said, she asked some very worldly sex questions about human life and all those things. So Shankara says, you know, as a monk, I cannot answer this question, but you will have to give me one month time. I shall answer your question by writing. So Shankara left with his disciples. 
And Shankara told his disciples, I shall enter into a dead body and make him alive. And then with that body, I shall rise. And again, I shall come back to my body. I, I am leaving this body in this cave. Please protect it. At that time, a king, Amaruk, Amaruk, he died. And his family were crying, the queens and the ministers. So Shankara entered into his a yogic process. Everything in India possible, you see. <laughs> he entered that King Amruk's body, and the king was alive. So minister and his wife all are very happy. And they found that he has so much wisdom. The beautiful, he is managing the whole country. And at night time, he wanted to be alone. At night time, he used to answer those questions. Then the queen and the minister consulted, but he must be a yogi or a great soul enter into my husband's body. Burn all dead bodies in wherever you find. We want this person should live in this body forever. So the people found out Shankara's body. And Shankara's one disciple thought, Paras Guru has forgotten us, enjoying the palace and the queen. <laughs> and they gave some signal, Shankara realized, yes, I'm coming. The immediately when they took his body and about to cremate, Shankara left this body and entered into his original body and got up. And then answered the questions of that, carried these answers to that <coughs> wife, uh, Ubhai Bharati, and Manjan Mishra became his disciple. Shankara had four disciples. Padmapad, Manjan Mishra later became Shureshwara Acharya, then Hastamalaka Acharya, and Tutaka Acharya. These are the four disciples of Shankara. And these four disciples became the four heads of the four monasteries. As I say, Shankara wrote many books refuted various schools of thought and established non-dualistic Vedanta, Advaita Vada. And then Shankara, we do not find Shankara's dead body. He went to Kedarna and disappeared. That is the end of Shankara. Those who have visited Kedarna, they know behind the Kedar temple, there is a temple of Shankara where he disappeared. Anyhow, that is the brief story of Shankara's life. Now I shall have to talk about Vedanta. What is Vedanta? <coughs> so is Shankara taught. <coughs> There are three objections against Vedanta. There are three criticisms. First, Vedanta is dry. Second, Vedanta is difficult. Third, Vedanta discourages worldly enjoyment. These are the three objections against Vedanta. Do you think that <clears throat> Vedanta is difficult. They have never tried. They are lazy. Those who say Vedanta is difficult, they, they way they think. You see, here is a coconut. If you want to milk of the coconut and the and the kernel, you will have to break it. Otherwise, you cannot get the kernel and the, and the, and the water. You will have to make an effort to know it. Try. Vedanta is not dry. The subject matter of Vedanta is Shachidananda, existence, consciousness, bliss. Bliss is the force. Bliss is the goal in Vedanta philosophy. Sorry, in Tattiri Upanishad we read, 
आनंद धैव खल्लिमानि भूतानि जायन्ति आनंदे न जाता ने जीवन्ति आनंद अप्रयंत भी संभिषन्ति दिस होल क्रिएशन केम फ्रॉम ब्लिस व्हिच स्टेज इन ब्लिस एंड इट मर्जेस इनटू ब्लिस दैट कैन नॉट बी ड्राई रसो वैसा ही इज रोशो फुल ऑफ फेलिसिटी फुल ऑफ जूस सच्चिदानंद आनंद इज द ब्लिस the bhuma the infinite bliss that is our goal the third <coughs> objection that on that <coughs> brahm um, vedanta is <coughs> discouraged worldly enjoyment that is true vedanta wants you to get permanent bliss not momentary temporary bliss temporary excitement or temporary joy that is the first thing to tell you vedanta is a vast subject i am studying and teaching this vedanta of last 60 years i know very little <laughs> this source of vedanta is the vedas the vedas as four each there are four vedas rik sama yoju atharva and each veda has four parts sangita brahmana Arinaka Upanishad. Sangita hymns, Brahmana the rituals, Arinaka meditation and prayer, and Upanishad philosophy. So Vedanta, this Vedanta philosophy is the Upanishad. Upa means near, ni means definitely, shad means destroy. If you go to your teacher, he will definitely destroy your ignorance. That is Upanishad. There are hundred and eight Upanishads in the Munju, in Mukti Ko Upanishad, and this Vedanta philosophy stands on a tripod. Tripod. The first leg of that tripod is Upanishad. Second, Brahma Sutra. Third, Bhagavad Gita. Of course, Shankara's other commentaries and other books, Bibi Ko Chura Muni, Panchadashi, all the books also. great great books on vedanta shankara wrote the commentary if you want to establish any philosophy in india you will have to write commentary of these three books shankara wrote non dualistic philosophy ramanuja wrote qualified monistic philosophy and madhva wrote dualistic philosophy these three schools of thought all are vedanta when swami ji returned from america to in madras swami ji said these three schools are not contradictory they are complementary somebody said nobody has ever said that swami ji said because he was waiting for me he said if you take the picture of the sun in the morning in the noon in the evening all pictures will be different but you are taking the picture of the same sun vedanta philosophy philosophy is called darshan darshan means to see in himalayas generally the monks address other monks kya aapka darshan saaf hai is your vision clear what do you see do you see variety multiplicity or do you, do you see that oneness here vedanta is very clear about it dualistic vision is not right is wrong if you see two moons if you see two cars are coming toward you what does it mean there is a disease in your eyes glaucoma or some other problem you have double vision you better go to the doctor so when we see variety multiplicity diversity that means we have a disease name of the disease is ignorance or gyan this is very interesting in vedanta we see variety
Naraji. Who created these things? Maya. We shall talk about Maya later. Darshan. Shrutaibhu, Shruti Bhakti Bhu, Mantabhasya Bhupati Bihi, Matvacha Satadan Deya. It is Darshan Hitabha. First you listen about Vedanta. Ashukti Amrite, till you go to sleep, till you die. Continuously listen. Then, after listening, you reflect what you have heard. After reflection, you meditate. Then, you will get the vision. What kind of vision? Ekotva darshanam. One, vision of one, sarvam khalu idam brahma. You will see brahman is in everything, in every being. That vision will come. That is liberation. At that time, you cannot hate anybody, you cannot kill anybody. But before you attain that, you practice Vedanta, there are says Vedanta, if you want to be a student of Vedanta, you need four qualifications. First, although nitta nitta was to be weaker, first you need the power of discrimination. What is real, what is unreal? In this world, everything is unreal. What is the definition of reality? Trikalo avade tattam nitattam. The thing which exists in the past, present, and future, that is real. There is nothing in this world which exists in the past, present, and future. 200, 300 years ago, St. Louis City was not here. I am, you see, we are not here, we shall not, we come from unknown, unmanifest, and go to unmanifest. So this manifestation is not eternal, permanent. Second qualification, renunciation, detachment. I do not want this kind of temporary enjoyment. Third, self-control. Fourth, burning desire for liberation. If you have these three, four, four qualifications, you are supposed to come to Vedanta. Very difficult. Well, sometimes I say, if you go to medical school, you need preparation. You get pre-med school. You want to come <laughs> to know Brahman, you need these things. Then, Shambhanda, relationship. Brahman is my goal. And how can I know it? From Guru and from the scripture. That is called indirect knowledge. Indirect knowledge comes from Anubhuti, my own realization. Prajan, what is the necessity of studying Vedanta? Agyana Nibhriti, Paramananda Prapti. Cessation of ignorance and attainment of bliss. How can I attain bliss? How can I get liberation? Bondage and liberation. Very interesting, this Vedanta. Liberation cannot be created. The thing which has been created is subject to destruction. This building was created one day, one day it will be destroyed. The body was created one day, it will be destroyed. Whatever has been created is subject to destruction in this world of domain of maya, everything is changing. But Brahman is the unchanging reality, eternal. It will never be destroyed. In Munjoko Upanishad, we read that a student came to the teacher examining this world, nasi akrita kritino. This Brahman uncreated cannot be attained through action. 
So he guru movie by Gachet, Samitpani, Shrutinam, Brahmanishtam. He goes to the guru to know about Brahman. He carries sacrificial wood to the guru. <laughs> I remember in Hollywood when I gave that talk on the Upanishad. In Christmas time, one of my students gave me a gift. I did not know a big box. A b many, in ancient days, the disciples would go to the guru with sacrificial wood for the home of fire. So he sent a big piece of wood covering all fancy paper. <laughs> they are all hippies, you see. <laughs> so I was about to throw away. Then I checked it. I found that they put a hundred dollar bill with a scotch tape with that wood. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> the Guru teaches how? Through Adharop and Apobad. Superimposition, de superimposition. First, the Guru will tell you that how your Atman is covered by five sheaths of the soul. Blissful sheath, Ananda Kusha. Then intellectual sheath, Vigyana Kusha. Then mental sheath, Monomaya Kusha. Then vital sheath, Pranamaya Kusha. Then Annamaya Kusha, physical sheath. And how to remove these five sheaths so that you can see your Atman. You can experience it. We are all hypnotized by Maya. I am Guru says Tattamoshi, you are Brahman. I am supposed to feel that I am Brahmashmi, I am Brahman. But you don't feel it. Because of Maya. I shall tell you an incident I read. One Chinese prisoner was in this cell, dungeon, dark cell for 30 years. During the coronation of the king of China, all prisoners were released. This man came out and saw the bright sun. He was crying. Oh, no, 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 I shall die, I shall die. I cannot bear this sunlight. I cannot bear this kind of life. Please send me back again to the dungeon myself, the darkness. 30 years this man was in the cell. It becomes his nature. That becomes his home. Similarly, whole life we are hypnotized by Maya. Thinking, I am Chetrananda, I am a body, mind, all these things. Maya. Maya makes him infinite, finite. It is all agatana, agatana, putyushi, Maya. It makes the impossible, possible, possible, impossible. It makes all mixture. I understood Maya once I went to buy a pair of shoes in West Coast Plaza in California, Southern California. So they we went to, after the buying shoes, we went to a restaurant, rain forest restaurant, hotel. After a rain forest, you will see gorilla, you will see trees, and rain comes, and the gorilla makes noise, pressing the hands, you know, on the chest, and makes all noise. Sometimes the parents bring the children for the, on their birthdays in that restaurant. So I sat one table, they sat another table. All of a sudden, that gorilla was making noise and breaching the chest and making noise. And this child, three, four years old boy, was crying and crying, fear, out of fear. I realized that is Maya. To that little boy, that gorilla is real. To me, that is gorilla is unreal. It is all computerized program. The gorilla, every 15 minutes, will make noise. This is called Maya. You see, there are two beautiful words of Vedanta you must learn. Asat, Mitta. Vedanta says the world is unreal. Asat means the thing which does not exist and you cannot see, horn of a man, we do not see. But mitha means it does not exist, but you can see, like mirage. 
in the desert. You can see water on the sand. Or you can see silver on the mother of pearl on the, sand, on the beach. But they are not real. That is called mitha. Adhash. If you understand this adhash, superimposition in Vedanta, then you will know what is the mystery of Maya. In the Brahma Sutra, in the, in the, in the, in the opening commentary, Shankara mentioned, Satya nite mithuni kitta ahamidam mamaidam iti nushirgikoyam loka bhavaharo. This whole world is a mixture of truth and untruth. Untruth means maya. And truth means Brahman, consciousness and unconsciousness, spirit and matter, mixed up. Aham idam, mama idam, I am, my. This whole world is nothing but I and my. This I and my are the warp and woof of Maya. All we are trapped in that net of Maya. I, my. I am Chaturanda, I am this, I am that. My books, my ashram, my, I, my. I and my, I and my. Nothing, when I and my go away, the world disappears. It is amazing that how this I binds us. For the reason those who used to go to Ramon Morsi, she, she used to say, find out, who am I? That was his mantra, who am I? Ayodhash. Some people think that if it is all truth, it will not work. As Sri Ramakrishna says, absolutely 100% pure gold does not make any jewelry. Necklace, bracelet, and earring, nose ring, it will not come from the pure gold. They mixed with alloy. Then you can give shape. So this is the way we found this world. Sometimes I tell people, watch these five things. Vasti, Bhati, Priyo. Existence, knowledge, bliss, that is Brahman. Namo Rupa, name and form, Maya. This whole world is nothing but name and form. Chaitananda has a name, it has a form. If one day is evolved, one day it will dissolve. This is Maya. <coughs> Amazing, this Maya. Brahma is the ultimate reality. Shankara mentioned, Shulakardhina prabhakshyami yaduktam guruntuko chivi, Brahma sittam jagar mitha jiva brahma iva napara, which has been enumerated in millions of Verses, I shall tell you in happy verse. Brahma Sittam, Brahma, Brahman alone is real. Jagan Mitha, this world is not real. Jiva Brahma even Aparal, all individual beings are nothing but Brahman. This only three, sen three sentences, that is enough. Then you have understood the whole Vedanta. Brahma is the absolute reality, pure consciousness. Unchanging reality, free from qualities, no limitations. We get knowledge. How do you get knowledge? Desha, Kala, Bostu. Desh, space. This is a chapel space, library space, kitchen space, room space, bathroom space. Break this house, it is only space. So through space we get the knowledge. Then Kala, time. Shankara's birthday, next Sanjay will be Buddha's birthday. Yesterday, today, tomorrow, morning, noon, evening. This is the way we get the knowledge. Bostu, that is the chair, this is the microphone, this is the book, this is the light. These are all objects. This is the three ways we can get the knowledge. That happens in the domain of Maya. In Brahman, 
there is no such thing, no divisions. <coughs> Amazing. And this Atman, individual consciousness, and this cosmic consciousness are the same. This space in the jar and this, this cosmic space, both the space are the same. That is the way Vedanta explains. <coughs> Jiva, individual soul, actually Brahman, but thinks that I am the Jiva. <coughs> Jagat. We must know the world we live in, this world. It is an interesting place. Madhushadan Saraswati refuted, the world is not real. Angshatvat, it is a part that cannot be real. Jodhatvat, if it is matter, that cannot be real. Purichinatvat, that thing which is really limited cannot be real. Drishatvat, the thing which you see cannot be real. In this way, he gave all reasons the reality. This world is not real. But it is hard to believe. My husband, my wife, my children, my family, my Kachars, my Ramakrishna, all these things are unreal. Absolutely, from the absolute point, absolute point of view, it is unreal. But reality point of view, it is real. <coughs> Shankara admitted this, this relative reality, Luka Vavahara. But I make, sometimes I make a joke. Everything is unreal. My guru is unreal, my mantra is unreal, my ishti is unreal, I am unreal. But the unreal guru through unreal mantra can remove the unreal ignorance of the unreal disciple. The unreal doctor can remove the unreal disease of the unreal patients. <laughs> hmm? That is the way it goes. It does not have absolute reality, but relative reality. <coughs> Shankara stays on the knowledge aspect. Gyanat moksha. Gyan, knowledge. How do we get knowledge? Look how we get knowledge. Here is the chair. My, my, my intellect, my mind, and the, on that mind there is a reflection of this Atman, that is called that Chidabhash. That mind becomes luminous. And that luminous mind goes on the chair and tells this is the chair. It destroys the ignorance of the chair, but actually, the Atman manifests this year. Two things happen. Let me give an example, you will understand better. He, perhaps you have seen, here is a mirror, and I am taking the sunlight. Some children sometimes play. And taking that sunlight, they put here and there on your face or somebody's window. That reflected light works that way. So human mind is just reflected light. From Brahman, it is reflected, and we are putting here and there. That is where we are getting knowledge. But this reflected light, if you put on the sun, it is overwhelmed. It cannot reflect the sun. That happens when we, sham when we get samadhi. This reflected light becomes one with that cosmic light. Individual consciousness, it becomes one with the cosmic consciousness. That is the way it works. At that time, the mind becomes the subject. The mind becomes the object. That is the reason Sri Ramakrishna said, pure mind and pure Atman are one. You know, that aspect is shadun shapekho. If you practice a spiritual disciplines, only you can experience that kind of things. It will take you to samadhi. I remember one of my students he used to come and tell me, Swami, I like to have samadhi. You know, samadhi, 
before you attain samadhi, you engage Ridoy, you need a person who can hold you. Otherwise, Sri Ramakrishna fell, he broke his hand, he broke his tooth. So you better engage somebody before you get samadhi. Her husband says, Swami, I can do that job. I shall hold my wife, let her have samadhi. <laughs> Another person came and said, Swami, I want to see God. I told him, really? Yes. But listen, within 21 days he will die. <laughs> he was scared. <laughs> Sri Ramakrishna said, after God's realization, bus, you cannot function anymore. You will be saturated with God consciousness and bliss. You will, you will be floated in bliss. You will be carried away by bliss. Your husband, wife, children, all will disappear. <laughs> As Sri Ramakrishna says, a cloth doll went to take the bath in the ocean. It took bath, but it was saturated with water and fell down on the seashore. That will happen. That, that word in Upanishad is very beautiful. Otosha protosha. It is saturated. With God consciousness, you cannot function anymore. If, if 440 or 880 electric volt touches your body, you will be electrified in no time. You, you will be dead. <laughs> so better <laughs> have some joy, bliss, time to time. <laughs> Sri Ramakrishna said to the Brahmas, I am burnt completely. Tumra share mate achu. You have some family and you say a little spirituality, you, you have been poor both. You people are very intelligent, but I am burnt. That thing happened. You cannot function in this world. <laughs> Somebody says, I want liberation. Shankara's liberation is prapti prapti. Attainment of the attain. Swarajya Siddhi, attainment of the lost empire, regain the lost empire. Let me tell you what is Shankara's Mukti. Ramanuja says Mukti liberation can be attained through spiritual disciplines and practices and all these things. Shankara says, no, you are already free. Atman is ever Nitya Mukta. Mukti cannot be created because then it will be subject to destruction. We give this example. Here is a rich aristocratic woman who wants to go to a party. She, is, she was searching a, her necklace. She could not find it. Searching, searching, searching. Her friend was waiting. What is the matter? Well, I'm searching my necklace. My goodness. That, of course, that lady has a turtle neck sweater. But well, yes, I see some glittering inside your neck there. Then she put her hand and found the necklace. And immediately she was happy. That is called prapti prapti. Necklace is there, but you forgot it. That is the way Vedantic liberation works. You are already free. You are already living. Know it. Know thyself. Who wants liberation? <laughs> I remember Sh Swami Bhuteshanandaji. He was a great Swami. A devotee came and said, Shangshare Bodo Ashanti. There is so much suffering in this world. The Shmara said, I know the medicine, how to get rid of that suffering. But how, Swami? Just give up desires. Who, Swami, we are householders, and how can we give up our desires? Tali Ashanti Niyei Thaku. Then live with the with Ashanti, misery. Shami gave a beautiful answer. <laughs> Who wants liberation? <laughs> I told you as the Indian folklore. Vishnu went to, sorry, Narada went to Vishnu and said, Lord, people are in this world are suffering so much. Why don't you bring those people to heaven in Boikunto and let them have this heavenly bliss? Vishnu said, do you think people want to come to heaven? Well, of course they do. Well, no, you go, I shall keep the gate of heaven open three days. You bring as many people as you like. 
So, so Narada ran to the world and found an old man seated on a bench in the park and said, hello, I see you are pretty old. Do you like to go to heaven? Well, of course I like to go to heaven. Well, right now, please come with me. Oh, no, no, no. My granddaughter's marriage in September, after the marriage ceremony, I shall go. Now they say, the only three days the gate will be open. Well, no, after death I shall go. <laughs> he could not get him. He found another young man depressed, seated on the chair. Well, hello, do you like to go to heaven? Well, no, yes, I'm very sad. Well, what happened? I newly married my wife. I had gone to her father's home. I feel lonely. I am very sad. Well, do you go to heaven? Well, no, my wife will be back. He could not get him. Then Narada found a little boy walking on the street. Hey, do you like to go to heaven? Of course. Can my mom come with me? Well, of course, bring your mom. So he, the boy entered the house, brought the mom. Mom came with the angry mood. You rogue, you have come to kidnap my son. Get out from my place, otherwise I shall call the police. Narada ran away. So he could not get anybody to go to heaven. So you see, don't think that everybody wants liberation or <laughs> Follow Swamiji's method. Swamiji, oh my goodness, I passed that. Swamiji wrote a poem, Gai Geet Shunate Tumai, a song I sing to thee. Das tabo janame janame dayani di, mamo guti nahi jani, tabo guti nahi jani, keba chai jani bari. Master, I am your servant birth after birth. I do not know my way. I do not know your way either. Who cares to know? I surrender myself to you. You do what is best for me. That is the way I think. Love God, serve God. Let him decide whether you need nirvikalpa samadhi or there are various kinds of liberation. According to Shankara, Jivan Mukti, free while living. Vidho Mukti, at the time of death you will get liberation. Kruma Mukti, gradual liberation. You after death you will go to Brahma Loka, then you will get liberation. Then in the dualistic school also there are various kinds of liberation. Sharshti, Shamippo, Shalokko, Shajujyo. You will get equal power of God. You will live in the abode of God. You will be very close to God. You will get very equal form of God. In this way, they have also various concepts of liberation. Anyhow, I just give you some ideas about Vedanta. As I said, America is a great country for Vedanta because what Vedanta teaches, that is the we Western, especially American people, think. First, they believe in democracy. So Vedantic concept of God is a democratic concept of God. Each soul is potentially divine. Second, freedom. America's chosen deity is the liber Statue of Liberty in New York. Freedom, freedom is the song of the soul that Vedanta teaches, that American people love. And it is a non-sectarian, non-dogmatic, universal truth religion. Anybody can practice it. It is free. Anyhow, that is the way I look at it. That is the reason I'm Vedanta is very much appreciated in the West, especially in America. Thank you. Masatoma Sadgamaya, Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya, Mrittorma Amritam Gamaya, Abirabirma Yedi, Rudra Jate Dokshinamukam, Tinamam Pahinityam, Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Legions from the unreal to the real, legions from darkness to light, legions from death to immortality, light us through and through, and guide us evermore with the loving presence. Om. Peace, 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 went forward.